Welcome to our Eden Home Resort channel. This is part 3C of the final call. I uploaded it once under greatest difficulties with a different title, but YouTube did not publish it. The adversary seems not to be happy with this message. And as we are living off grid, he's trying to silence me and he destroyed not only my converter from 24 volt to 220 volt, but also my backup converter. So with the last battery power of my computer, I hope to publish this message now. But before I start, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we invite you to talk to us through your Holy Spirit now. Be with us, open our minds so that we understand what you want to tell us. Give me the words that you want me to speak and take myself out of it and open the hearts of the listeners. And I thank you for that in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As January 30 did not come up as expected, I was wondering what this is about. And I, I really believe in these timelines. And so I was searching for more knowledge and knowledge he alone can give. And as I was ringing with this last night for answers again, I, I spent, yeah, like Enoch, a season in solitude, hungering and thirsting for the divine knowledge which God alone can impart. And I was wondering, so if the timelines did not start January 30th, when will they start? Uh, when will the 1,000... 290 days start or better when will the 1335 days start and which is one verse lower I picked the wrong slide sorry about that but I opened up my Bible and I was looking actually for the verse in Daniel 12 about the 1,335 days, but I stopped at the end of Daniel 10. And there it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And I looked around, and it was Gabriel speaking. And I was so amazed and encouraged, and I thought, The Lord will give me the answer tonight. And it says in Sanctified Life, God is the author of truth. He enlightens the darkened understanding and gives to the human mind power to grasp and comprehend the truth which he revealed. And in Desire of Ages it says, Gabriel, the angel who stands next in honor to the Son of God, is the one who chosen to open the purposes of God to sinful man. So, I was pleading that God would show me this, and so I searched, and my eye fell on Revelation 19, and there the passage of 6 through 9. Actually, I had a cross-reference in Daniel 10 to this, and that's how I came to it. And in Daniel 19, we know it is the seventh thunder that's mentioned in verse 6 and, and 7. And it is as the voice of thund thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And then a little bit later in verse 9 it says, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I thought, this is it. Blessed are they. This is the blessing. This is when the blessing comes for the people that are waiting. And then it says, these are the true sayings of God. And, and I felt this is the answer. So the 1,335 days end not with the sixth thunder, but as the 1,260 days, but at the seventh thunder. And there it says in great controversy, at the appointed time the bridegroom came, 
not to the earth as the people expected, but to the Ancient of Days in Heaven, to the marriage, the reception of his kingdom. And this was talked about in relation to 1844, actually. And then it goes on. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The closing of the door will be the close of probation for every human being dependent on yeah, when he will die or when where he lives and if he's a believer or not. They were not to be present in person at the marriage, for it takes place in heaven while they were upon the earth. The followers of Christ are to wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Luke twelve thirty six. But they are to understand his work and to follow him by faith as he goes in before God. This, this, in this, this, this is in this sense that they are said to go into the marriage. So they will be waiting for him. The ones are waiting 1,335 days. They will be the ones coming in and they will have to have a knowledge of the sanctuary truth. Without that, we'll miss it. And so, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And this is the blessing that Daniel 12 talks about. So, originally I presented this timeline um, finishing with the Feast of Trumpets the 1,335 days. But I realized last night that there was a mistake in there. And I guess William Miller had a mistake too, and he came up with the message one year earlier. So with that, my message will be now a little bit different, as you can imagine. My timeline started on September 23rd, 2015, with a seven-year period with the Pope in the White House and ended with the Feast of Trumpets for the 1,335 days and then 15 days more to, to the end of the 1,290 days. But last night the Lord showed it to me differently. And it, the, the timeline ends 15 days later at the Feast of Tabernacles. And at the Feast of Tabernacles we see that there is a celebrating or a celebration of the Lord's deliverance out of bondage. It happened that way when the Israelites uh, finished their journey uh, through the desert into Canaan, and it will happen for God's people this way too. So the end of the 1,335 days is the, at the Feast of Tabernacles and not at the Feast of Trumpets. That's the end of the 1,260 days. And so I prepared a new slide uh, integrating this. And here I start actually on September 24th, 2015, because a friend of mine who is very good in history and who observed those events more than I did, he said that was the day when the Pope was in the U.S. Congress. And that day actually... It was the first time that the flag of the Vatican was hissed in the United States at the, in the, and in the U.S. Congress. And supposedly all the nations that were represented in addition, or in the, in the U.N., I believe, the day later, uh, all the nations represented um, accepted the Laudata Si as something they wanted to implement. And, and this was also the Day of Atonement on one of the calendar, calendars. Um, I used the sundown date, but this calendar um, uses the, the other date. Uh, uses, it's one day later, so September 24th. And with that, I'll come to the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, I, I'll arrive there at a different date. But otherwise, the timelines uh, stay the same, except 
that the new world order would start 45 days after the uh, National Sunday Law and the Universal Sunday Law will start 60 days later. So if I look at the calendar, um, it begins, the, begins for, the, uh, for the Feast of Tabernacles 2022. It begins uh, at sundown October 9, or if you want, and that could be called October 10, and it will end at sundown October 16, 2022. And from there, the earliest day that would give, give it the earliest date we would have for the U.S. National Sunday Law would be the sundown of September 13, 2019. And that most likely will occur as a sudden, th sudden thunder for most of the people. And it will close the door for Seventh-day Adventists in the United States before closing it 60 days later for the Adventists in the rest of the world and then at the close of probation, uh, sorry, for the rest of the church and then for the close of probation for the rest of the world, uh, 360 days before the Feast of Tabernacles. So we talked about that the Sunday law, especially in the, in the United States, is concealed and it will come as a surprise. And it will not be the date, like I said, January 30, 2019. But we have to make our choice, Christ or Barabbas. So did I give a false alarm with the January 30? I gave a warning, for sure. And I don't believe that I'm a false watchman. I believe that, like God used Miller, he gave a warning a year in advance. Mine was a few days in advance to make maybe make people think. But a watchman is there to warn and to hear the words from the mouth of the Lord and to give it on. And it talks about in Ezekiel 3 verse 20 and 21 the importance of also warning the righteous. Yeah, because they they might be misguide, misguided too. But if I wouldn't warn, I the Lord would require the blood, their blood, from my hand. And I certainly do not want to have blood on my hands. But the end is near and probation is closing. And there's not going to be a fun time. It talks about in... Um, I think messages to young people. Um, thousands of ships, navies will go down, lives will be sacrificed by millions, fires unexpectedly, and no human effort will be able to quench them. Disasters by rail, death without a moment's warning will occur at, on the great lines of travel. It's a warning. But the important thing is our character. And I believe there's a judge uh, limit to the judgment of Jehovah and that he might not wait longer than that because the fourth generation for Seventh-day Adventists runs out in May 2023. And so I have been pleading like Abraham was pleading for the righteous, for the righteous in, in Sodom and Lord was pulled out of it. And I've been actually praying that it wouldn't happen on January 30 because I was worried that the warning would not have gone out. But it is important to plead and to, to sigh and cry for, for our people. And that's what I would like to encourage everyone to do because time is running out soon and I'm afraid for some too soon. Well... My 15 minutes that I have is almost up. I like to encourage everyone to pray about this, study this message, study these line, timelines, share the links maybe, and, and warn people and come out of her, my people, the Lord says. And that is my message to everyone. May God bless you as you search your own hearts, where you stand, and what you want to do with this message. And I 
I believe it's the word of God and that's why I have to publish it and I can only give it on like this.